ladies and gentlemen shortly we'll be starting the second technical session on social sciences and humanities all participants are kindly requested to keep their microphones muted throughout the session a warm afternoon to all we on behalf of the faculty of management social sciences and humanities of general sir john kotalawala defense university we welcome you all to the second parallel technical session on social sciences and humanities of 14th international research conference on security stability and national development in the new normal ladies and gentlemen today's second technical session will be chaired by dr kamalika jayatilaka we have the honor of giving a brief introduction of the chairperson of this session Dr. Kamalika Jayatilaka. Dr. Kamalika Jayatilaka is a senior lecturer and acting head of the department, Department of Indigenous Social Sciences in Gampaha Vikramarachi University of Indigenous Medicine, and a visiting lecturer in social research methods at the Department of Social Sciences in the Faculty of Management, Social Sciences. and humanities of general sir john kotalawala defense university she obtained bachelor of arts in sociology from the university of peradeniya she holds two master degrees in sociology and social research from the university of leeds united kingdom and phd in sociology and social policy from the same university She has served as a copy editor of Graduate Journal Social Sciences, business editor of Leeds Living Publication, and as a media and communication intern basing Human Rights United Kingdom. She was travel feature writer at BT Option Sri Lanka, and prior to that, she was an academic support worker. in disability and dyslexia service in the university of wooster united kingdom and a disability support worker at leeds beckett university united kingdom she has more than 12 years of teaching experience in media and communication ethnicity and culture journalism and social research methods madam we cordially invite you to commence the session over to you madam Sorry, can you hear me? Yes, madam. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Sorry about that. So let me uh, uh, first thank the Kotalawala Defence University for inviting me for this very important event, and uh, commend the relevant parties for a very well thought through and very uh, well organised um, event uh, amidst the adverse conditions that we are all facing as a country. Uh, it is an honor to be a part of this uh, very vibrant and very well attended uh, scholarly exchange so um, without much uh, ado let me uh, first of all you know um, you go to uh, uh, the first presenter i will like to you know uh, introduce the very first uh, presenter so the paper um, he will present is economic sensitivity sensitivity of non working females for wage differential compensation uh, empirical evidence from sri lanka so if i am to uh, introduce the presenter the mr uh, pasan m vijayawardena he is an assistant lecturer of the department of economics in university of sri jayawardenepura He has completed a BSc in Business Economics, uh, also at the University of uh, Sri Jayawardenepura. Qualified in CMA, DABF, IABF, and AAT. Um, and previously, he has worked as a, a national director at uh, ISEC Sri Lanka, and he is the founder 
um, president of Sri Lanka Forum of Junior Business, Business Economists. Right. Okay, over to you, uh, Mr. Vijayavardhan. Give me one minute. Right. So let me to share my screen. Can you see the screen? Yes, we can. Okay, uh, so good, good evening everyone. Uh, economic sensitivity of non-working females for wage differential compensation, empirical evidences from Sri Lanka. I'm Pasan Vijayawadana from the Department of Economics in University of Sri Jawadhanapura. So the problem justification, what's the problem that I have identified here? That is low women economic empowerment in South Asian region. In South Asian region, you can see this graph. The blue colored column basically shows the female labor force participation in almost all the South Asian countries. It's very low, right? What's the main reason? As for literatures, okay, the women's triple burden can be identified as a, one of the key reasons for this low female labor force participation over 20 years. Okay, So however, Okay, females have to do multiple roles, not like males. They have to engage in the reproductive activity, activities like child care, community works like social works. Together with that, they have to do, uh, do a job uh, for pay. That means they have to do a productive work. Okay, so according to this one, females have to sacrifice lots of things if they want to join a labor, join to the labor force. That means the opportunity cost of females is a greater than the opportunity cost of males. Under this kind of background, will females motivate to join the labor force without any extra financial incentive? That's the problem that I identified. So I suggested that if we compensate or if we provide extra wage as a compensation to cover the extra opportunity cost of the females, can we increase the labor force participation of females? This is the problem that I wanted to emphasize. Can compensating wage differentials economically empower female in South Asia? Right. So these are primary objectives investigating the impact of compensating wage differentials on women economic empowerment. Secondary objectives are examining the responsiveness of South Asian non-working females to the wage increment in ma macro level, identifying non-wage factors which determine the women's economic empowerment in Asia, South Asia, finding the determinants of women's wage differential compensation sensitivity and exploring the reasons for Sri Lanka's regional diversity in wage differential compensation sensitivity, right? So this is my literature review part, and now we will be moving to the research methodology. We have employed mixed research method, and that is explanatory design follow-up explanation model. I have, begin, I have began my research through a quantitative data analysis, data collection, data analysis, and I have done it a, a quantitative study at the very beginning. However, the findings of the quantitative studies were really interesting because of that I have done a certain kind of a follow-up uh, with use of a qualitative test. Okay, the quantitative approach. I have done a quantitative approach in two ways, micro-level analysis and macro-level analysis. The base for macro-level macro analysis is quantitative secondary data, but micro-level analysis is quantitative primary data. However, in both of these quantitative anal analyzers, I have used four countries as the sample countries uh, from South Asia, India, Sri Lanka, Pakistan, and Bangladesh, because those were the four countries who showed the lowest female labor force participation in 2018. However, through a panel data model, which covers the 17 years in macro level analysis, I tried to prove the hypothesis called there is a significant relationship between wage and female labor force participation rate. However, in micro level analysis, I have done this analysis with 113 participants, married and couple females, have children, child or children less than 18 years of age, non-working females. This is the profile of respondents. And through this micro level analysis at the end, I have prepared a, a nice output, WWCSI, Women's Wage Compensation Sensitivity Index. So if it is uh, closer to zero, that means the sensitivity showed by the non-working females for wage compensation is very low. That means by paying extra wage to cover the op extra opportunity cost, we cannot empower females that much. But if it is closer to one, that means it's perfectly sensitive or sensitivity is high. Okay, That means by paying extra wage at a wage compensation, 
wage differential compensation, we can take the contribution of the females for the labor force as a solution for the current problem. Right. So this is the quantitative data analysis conceptual framework here. The women's economic empowerment was measured by the two dimensions, economic advancement and power and agency as per UN. However, later through the through the quantitative analysis, I identified that uh, the wage compensation sensitivity for uh, sensitivity for uh, sorry sensitivity of females, non-working females for wage compensation is different from state area to rural area, rural area to in urban area. So, what's the what are the root causes, reasons for this kind of a regional diversity? I wanted to do a in-depth analysis. So, I have done a study in Sri Lanka because uh, one of the main problem in Sri Lanka, out of the four main problem economic problems according to ILO, is the low female labor force participation over the last two decades. Okay, so I have done this with use of a thematic analysis, uh, right? However, these are the results of the macro level analysis. You can see out of the independent variables, which is the only significant factor uh, which shows significant relationship uh, with the uh, female labor force participation as per fixed robust, fixed effect robust. So I think that it's showing 10% positive significant relationship with the female labor force participation. That means simply macro level analysis said that by increasing the wages, we can increase the female labor force participation. The micro level analysis I have prepared WWCSI index, Women Wage Differential Compensation Sensitivity Index. So, index value is greater than 0 0.8 in all the four sample countries. That means it is closer to one. That means by paying extra wage as a wage differential compensation for the females, we can motivate females to the labor force. We identified that in all the four countries. But, however, Bargaining power index and the decision making power index are relatively low. It's greater than 0 0.5, but it's relatively low with compared to the other dimensions of the women's economic empowerment. That means paying extra wage is not a good solution to increase the bargaining power of the females, which is a part of the women's economic empowerment, and increase the decision making ability of the females, which is another part of the uh, economic empowerment of females. However, outsourcing index values are also greater than 0 0.8. That means if you pay extra wage for the females to take their contribution for the labor force, females will tend to, uh, yes, tend to allocate their household activities or fulfill their household activities through market, outsource their household activities through markets. They will be outsourcing household activities, child care and Uh, Mr. Vijay Vadhuni, you have just uh, muted yourself. Can you unmute? We can't hear it. And uh, now, can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can. Thank From you. which part did you miss? From which last, part did you miss? Yeah, last slide, the last bit. Okay, so however, uh, the women wage differential compensation cannot influence more on increasing bargaining power and decision making power of the females. However, based on the residents, highest sensitivity for wage compensation is showed by the rural area and the lowest showed by the state. However, highly educated females are showing low sensitivity for wage compensation and uh, uh, low educated females are showing high sensitivity for wage compensation. Okay. In the qualitative analysis, I have divided, derived seven themes, and these seven themes can be identified as the uh, determinants of wage differential compensation sensitivity of the females, okay, derived through the thematic analysis of Brown and Clark. Okay, so as I mentioned, these are the findings of the quantitative analysis. However, all the four South Asian sample countries are showing high sensitivity for wage compensation. That means by paying extra wage to cover the extra opportunity cost, we can empower females. However, rural areas are showing highest sensitivity, while estate areas are showing lowest sensitivity. Okay. However, the highly educated females are showing low sensitivity for wage compensation, and low educated females are showing high sensitivity. That means the highly educated females already have a lot big education, okay, and they have big earning sources. They're already earning a lot. 
but uh, you know that low educated females they don't have job opportunities high paying opportunities there are low level of opportunities under that kind of situation less educated females are showing a big sensitivity for wage compensation however okay even though we pay checks for wage that is not a good solution to enhance the bargaining power and work in place distribution facilities however if we pay extra wage through that we can create a wonderful market for the household activities child caring activities like what usa did at present however these are the findings of the qualitative analysis are the determinants of wage differential compensation sensitivity is determined by the seven factors as per qualitative study motherhood and child age so this is the one factor which affect for the wage differential compensation sensitivity when the child age increases gradually women's sensitivity for wage compensation is increasing but at the infant age of the child the sensitivity for wage compensation is very low the females with infants are less likely to join the labor force even though there's a wage compensation program in the country but if this child grow up this is increasing uh, in uh, likelihood to join labor force is increasing with the wage compensation however after a certain age of the child then again the sensitivity decrease and try to retire from the job try to move out from the job that's the nature of the females okay this bending age is different from mother to mother however child age and motherhood is another determinant of the differential wage differential compensation sensitivity cohabitation of grandparents if females are living more with grandparents they are showing high sensitivity for wage compensation male supremacy in traditionally patriarchal families in south asia most country most of the countries are traditionally patriarchal countries male is the person who is taking the decision of the females so if the male supremacy is high females are less likely to join the labor force even though there is a wage compensation program intergenerational education that means if parents don't have a big education they will be not trying to teach their children in a very good way and they are not like to have good jobs for their girls so under that kind of background uh, the sensitivity showed for the wage differential compensation among such families is low voluntary child labor some of the children are working voluntarily you know, child labor is something prohibited in sri lanka but some of the people children are working voluntarily okay in order to give freedom for their children in some areas so under that kind of situation if children are joining with the labor force voluntarily then uh, mothers are showing less sensitivity for wage compensation human trafficking for women labor exploitation can be observed in some areas and under that kind of situation if there's a human trafficking where females are less likely to join the labor force even though there's a wage compensation however if females have high growth needs and high domestic financial requirements they show high sensitivity for wage compensation however this sensitivity for wage compensation is low worst in the state why in the state there is a extreme male supremacy as i did this qualitative research by going to these areas uh, at mathale gol right nuarelia and everywhere i understood that most of the girls are dropping out from their schools at the age of at the grade of 6 after grade 6 after grade 7 so they will be finishing their school career and helping their uh, parents to earn parents to earn under this kind of background they will be trying to find a rich uh, male person male person to uh, marry under that kind of situation what will happen if less educated girl marry a rich person to survive their life the male supremacy is high that is another reason in this state sector however the negative impact of the parental education on the children drop out okay voluntary child labor is significantly high in this state sector oppressive human trafficking for exploitations females are working for very low salaries salaries are not enough because of that they are trying to double works and find in some other uh, works from some small small houses so there is a high human trafficking and there are some influences for the sexual uh, sexuality of the females as well however the estate females don't have more growth needs they have very simple lifestyle though they don't have very big dreams in their life because of that they don't want to work for high salaries however the rural areas are showing the highest sensitivity why they have dreams even though there is a less educated crowd okay even though there is a less educated uh, uh, people females they want to uh, they want to grow their life they have however they are suffering with financial deprivations because of that they are requesting for more salaries the rural females are ready to join the labor force at the first time that they are receiving opportunity to join 
However, these are the recommendations. We should implement this wage compensation sensitivity program mostly in rural and less educated uh, areas. Uh, Non-wage factors also should be considered. This is more applicable for prime working age people in 25 to 45 than implementing for the mothers with the young children and mothers with elder children. The mothers in this prime working age are showing high sensitivity. And however, we should develop the rural and state education system basically for girls. We should take the enrollment for STEM education system. However, the leadership development model also should be introduced for these areas. However, we should create some laws in order to reduce the human trafficking and there should be a continuous supervision program. There are laws, but the problem is uh, there is no execution program for, uh, to uh, the supervise whether these laws are implementing in East state sector, rural sector successfully with regard to female labor. However, we should implement a temporary subsidization program, especially for urban females, uh, because urban females are highly interested in doing their own jobs. They have been own account works, working inside the houses with their children, okay, cooking, okay, doing a bakery inside the house. So we should provide temporary subsidization program, uh, temporary subsidization for females in the urban sector to develop the own account workers. Okay, that's all about myself. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Vijay Vadhana. That was a very interesting uh, presentation. Uh, and uh, I mean, female labor force partition is one of the most uh, researched, most discussed uh, issues in terms of, especially in terms of national development. So very, uh, a very comprehensive, uh, very informative uh, presentation. Uh, I'm sure there will be lots of questions. Uh, I hope so. So thank you very much. So I'd like now to introduce our next um, presentation, which is uh, factors affecting um, shifting from current cultivation to hot pepper cultivation along with contract farming practices, a case study in Minuango to Sri Lanka. And the present uh, is, um, let's see, uh, Miss. Uh, Miss. Yeah. So should I stay or should I leave? Um, we are actually going to have the discussion after this uh, second presentation, Mr. Vijayavan. So okay. you can remain and listen to this and then we'll uh, engage in some form of discussion. Totally Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Um, so our next speaker, uh, presenter is Ms. Um, Sapuni Gunasekara. She's a final year undergraduate in uh, BSc Agribusiness Management. Uh, Faculty of Agriculture in University of uh, Rubuna, Sri Lanka. So I warmly invite Ms. Supan Sapuni Gunasekara to commence her presentation. Thank you. Can you see my slides? Yes, we can. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Sapuni Vasila, finally undergraduate from Faculty of Agriculture, University of Rubuna, and today I'm here to present about the research I carried out on factors affecting on shifting farmers from current cultivation to hot pepper cultivation along with contract farming practices, a case study in Minwangoda, Sri Lanka. This is the content of the presentation. And uh, then uh, let's have a brief introduction about hot pepper. Actually, it belongs to family Zolnase and genus Capsicum, originally found in Amazon Basin and also commercially grown throughout southern and northern Brazil. Uh, well known for their unique flavor and exceptional heat, and also it has been recognized as a high profitable crop in all over the world. These are some features about hot pepper. Then we'll see the problem statement. Even though hot pepper has been identified as a profitable and high market potential crop in all over the world, Sri Lanka has not yet recognized its economic values. Hence, Ceylon Agro Industries, a leading conglomerate in Sri Lanka, expects to go for some innovations in their product portfolio using this unique variety. So the company needs to shift farmers from current cultivation to hot pepper cultivation along with contract farming practices in the Mangoda area. However, the feasibility of shifting farmers from their current cultivation to hot pepper cultivation is questionable yet. Therefore, it's required to study the feasibility of shifting farmers towards hot pepper cultivation in order to establish buyback agreement with potential hot pepper farmers. 
The research objective is to identify the factors affecting on shifting farmers from their current cultivation to hot paper cultivation along with contract farming practices. Uh, then we see the methodology. I carried out this research study uh, through 70 vegetable farmers in one very years division using simple random sampling method and also uh, collected data from both primary and secondary data sources. After that, collected data were analyzed using both descriptive and inferential statistical methods. Uh, Wilcoxon sign grant test, crystal value scales, and one way ANOVA used as inferential methods. Uh, then I would like to uh, discuss about the research findings. First, we'll see the demographic information. Uh, here you can see this figure shows that 62.9% of farmers are represented uh, by male farmers and only 37.1% is represented by female farmers in Nyonwara area. And also majority of farmers belong to 40 to 50 age category. Uh, and also a uh, majority of respondents uh, record with the up to ordinary level education level category. Uh, and also uh, most of the farmers in Nyonwara area belongs to 20,000 to 40,000 monthly income category. This pie chart shows the available land extents owned by the farmers in Nyonwara area. According to that, majority of farmers have less uh, have land extent less than 0 0.25 acres because Nyonwara uh, area is a urbanized area, so lands are very expensive. Then I use ANOVA to check the significance of socio-economic factors on preference to grow hot pepper as a commercial crop. According to that, uh, only land size. Uh, significantly affected. It means when land size increases, there's a uh, more tendency to grow hot pepper as a commercial crop. This chart shows the experience of cultivating hot pepper. According to that, 61.4% of farmers in Minwangoda area uh, have a prior experiences of cultivating hot pepper. Uh, this chart shows the farmer's problem when selling the harvest to the market. According to that, the most prominent problem is price fluctuation. Uh, followed by market competition, market uncertainty, lack of market information, uh, and also, uh, but uh, transport difficulties are not a big problem faced by the farmers in Minangoda area because Minangoda have good infrastructure facilities compared to other rural districts in Sri Lanka. Uh, this chart also represents the problems in current cultivation. According to that, the most uh, prominent problem is pest and disease problem, especially uh, farmers who are growing chili phase 4 leaf curl complex uh, problem. These charts uh, show the farmer's uh, willingness to shift from current cultivation to hot pepper cultivation. According to that, 87.1% of farmers prefer to grow hot pepper as a commercial crop, while 88.2% of farmers are willing to shift from current cultivation to hot pepper cultivation. Then I use Kruskal Valley's test to check the factors of affecting on shifting towards hot pepper cultivation along with contract farming practices. According to that, only market potential and agroclimatic compatibility significantly affected. It means when there's a good market potential and hot peppers are compatible with the climatic condition in Minonbury area, there will be a more tendency to cultivate hot pepper uh, along with contract farming practices. This chart shows the type of inputs provided by the company. According to that, uh, most of the farmers expected both cash and fertilizer and agrochemicals as inputs. Uh, these charts uh, represent the farmers' preference on contract farming system. Uh, so 92.1% of farmers prefer to engage with contract farming practices, uh, while 77.1% uh, of farmers think it is easy for them to engage with contract farming system rather than cultivating at their own risk. Then I use Wilcox's sign grant test to check the significance of factors affecting while purchasing hot pepper seeds from the company. According to that, the factors such as price of the seeds, quality of the seeds, timeliness of availability of seeds, availability of seeds in adequate quantities, proximity to seed source, credibility of seed source, and crop performance are significantly affected. It means all these factors are considered by farmers when purchasing hot pepper seeds from the company. Uh, here you can clearly see price of the seeds, quality of the seeds, and credibility of seed source and crop performance are highly considered by farmers when purchasing the seeds from the company. Uh, this chart shows the seed purchasing methods. According to that, majority of farmers prefer to purchase seeds on cash, uh, while 22.4% of farmers prefer to purchase seeds on credit, 
uh, and only 6.9% of farmers prefer to purchase seeds half on cash and half on credit. Again, I use glucoxin cyanide to check the factors affecting while selling the harvest to the company. According to that, except average quantity, all other factors such as guaranteed and fixed price and strategies, assured market profit margin, quality standard, easiness of transportation, and legal framework significantly affected. Here you can clearly see aggregate quantity is not uh, considered by farmers when selling their harvest to the uh, company. It means uh, they are willing to sell their whole harvest to the company even at lower prices than outside market if only the company continuously purchase the harvest from those uh, farmers. Again, I'm going to conclude my major research findings. So when shifting from uh, current cultivation to hot pepper cultivation, 87.1% of farmers prefer to grow hot pepper as a commercial crop, uh, while 88.2% of farmers are willing to shift towards hot pepper cultivation. And also both market potential and agroclimatic compatibility affecting when shifting from current cultivation to hot pepper cultivation along with contract farming practices. And these are the factors affecting while purchasing the seeds and selling the harvest to the company. These are the most prominent requirements suggested by farmers to enhance and sustain hot pepper cultivation along with this type of contract farming system. Uh, some of them are providing extension services uh, because this is a new variety for them and providing suitable land to these for diseases, free trials, proper responding for farm inquiries, flexible agreements, collaborative farming, pot cultivation, providing water facilities and providing nursery plants instead of seeds. Uh, these are some references. And finally, I would like to uh, express my gratitude to Professor L.M. Abhayvikram and all other lecturers in the Department of Faculty of Agriculture, Economic uh, Faculty of Agriculture, University of Rukuna, and Ms. Kaumadi Radnaike, and all other staff members in Ceylon Agro Industries Private Limited, and all the individuals who supported even with, it, with a mere word for the success of this research project. This is the end of my presentation. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Kurnasek. That was also a very intriguing uh, presentation. So we have uh, gone through two very different but very interesting uh, presentations, one on uh, gender and other related to um, agribusiness. So very uh, interesting. Uh, so I would like to now open for discussion. I mean, if you have any questions, you're free to raise your hand digitally and uh, I will call upon your name to uh, ask uh, questions or comment or give feedback on the two presenters. Uh, I hope uh, Mr. Vijayavardhan is also present to uh, accept questions. Um, yeah. yeah, okay. So in the meantime, uh, while uh, the audience is uh, picking their brains on what to, you know, comment on and ask questions, I'd like to, um, I really like to get, uh, uh, Mr. ask Mr. Vijayavardhan on, on the first presentation. Um, about your, now I'm very interested in uh, the aspect of uh, estate women and uh, the, the issue of trafficking and uh, the women's migration to the Middle East as well as migration to uh, the, uh, uh, you know, my, within the country migration or domestic migration. Would you like to, uh, I, mean, I really like to, uh, you know, get more information on what you found through this research on uh, this element of migration and, and the, you know, the relationship between wage and uh, migration and what, what was characteristic of these women, if you don't mind. You are talking about uh, internal migration, no? Internal as well as uh, migration to the Middle East. Were there any differences between these women? No. Yeah, so uh, as I uh, more uh, did this research on the Sri Lankan, uh, this regional diversity, I, yeah. What I observe is uh, estate sector people don't have more life expectations. Okay, so their children are stopping there. So actually, it's a really difficult to believe that even these kinds of people are living in Sri Lanka in this 21st century as well. So when I was going there, I saw that there are lots of children who are working inside the uh, estate sector. So according to laws, according to regulations, children can't work. Okay. So children means the grade six, grade seven students are working in the uh, state sector. So what happened with this COVID-19 situation, the digital platforms were already closed, uh, digital platforms arised, and the estate people don't have more devices to log into this uh, 
thing. So what happened? System pushed okay these uh, students uh, to more and more involved in earning activities rather than educational activities. So what I realize is there is no any kind of supervision. Okay, no politicians, no government parties are going there and see what's happening in the state sector. And also there are lots of family problems, lots of family problems. I, I during my research, I record, I found that there are three suicide cases and two divorce cases, as well as that uh, there are two other cases in which the male has already killed the wife. Okay, and there is another small case in which the grade eight student is suffering with pure uh, unconsciousness still because of a family fight happened inside the families. So under this kind of what is the root cause of these uh, uh, these kinds of problems? Uh, because males are highly having certain kind of a, a myth regarding not sending females to the jobs. They have certain kind of that attitude. In Singhala, we called Sakaya. Sakaya is very great in the state sector because of the less education, everything. So with all these factors, the females are not likely to join the labor force, even though they will receive very big salary. I said that suppose you are going to earn uh, one lakh per one month. Okay, would you like to join the labor force? They said no. Because why? The uh, uh, husband is not permitting me to join the labor force. Okay, so however, females are ending their uh, education at the very young age. Therefore, somehow they have to survive. Therefore, they need to find a rich um, a male person. However, they have to worship their, that male partner throughout the whole life uh, without considering any other aspect. This is the problem in the state sector. But rural people are not like that. Rural females are really uh, nurtured. They want to develop their life. Even though they don't have very low education, they don't like to uh, give same education for children. They have more financial deprivations. Okay, the females in the rural sector don't have more high paying opportunities. Under that situation, they are ready to join the labor force at the very first chance in which they are receiving a high paying job. Right. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Vijayvadhan. We have a question from uh, Samara Jai Sundara. Uh, yes. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I want to uh, say that I really enjoyed both presentations. They were very interesting studies. Uh, maybe personally, I'm interested in them. Or uh, anyways, they were very interesting, and I really want to comment on your um, presentation on hot pepper. The slides were very interesting as well. They, I, I know you, uh, I can see you put a lot of time to make it so interesting. So uh, they were both interesting. Um, I want to first question um, to uh, ask a question from Mr. Vijayvardhana. Uh, with, uh, you mentioned compensating wage, uh, compensating for the wage differential. Did you offer cash? Uh, to these uh, uh, individuals when you were doing the survey, how did you capture at the macro level, how did you capture the wage differential com uh, compensation? And at the micro level, how did you capture the wage comp uh, differential compensation? Did you offer cash? And if uh, if it was a cash offering, did you, is it uh, like, you know, we know that there is a wage gap, a gender wage gap. So did, was that compensate uh, sufficient enough to compensate for that wage gender wage gap high enough to compensate for that wage gap or what was how did you determine what to offer to them yes uh, in that case madam uh, i didn't offer the cash because in this research what i wanted to find is the willingness of the females to join the labor force if they receive extra wage so I checked that willingness or so preference part only. I didn't do practical cash awards and everything because sometimes it may go uh, or violate the ethics of the research as well if I uh, reward themselves in identifying their reaction. And the other cases in mac my, my, my macro level, in my macro level, uh, I have identified the relationship between the wage and uh, the other thing is female labor force participation through secondary data analysis and, and uh, the data was collected from basically ILO and uh, yes, basically from ILO. Okay, so in that case, I just identified if wage increases, female, will female labor force participation increase through a regression analysis and through a panel data model. In that case, I didn't check the sensitivity of the females. So to check the sensitivity or the preference, I moved to the macro, micro level analysis 
Uh, I have taken the support from the, all the four countries with the support of the ISAC branches in Sri Lanka, Pakistan, Bangladesh, and uh, India. Right. However, I have spread a certain kind of a questionnaire. Okay. Uh, they are, I have appointed four friends to these four, four countries, and they have conducted those surveys in those countries to check. Uh, the preferences and I have used a certain kind of a Likert scale, five point Likert scale questionnaire for this purpose. And when I go to this uh, uh, in-depth analysis case study, so or the qualitative study in Sri Lanka, so I had lots of discussions that been interviews, uh, unstructured interviews with themselves around one hour, two hour, most of the lectures were, most of the discussions and case studies, those interviews were dragged for a long period of time. And through their ideas, I have catched what they really feel and what are the reasons behind these sensitivity differences in state, rural, and urban. That's the way I identified. So I wanted to identify the preference difference only. I didn't practically implement it. If it is good to do, in future, I can try. Okay, thank you. Um, so... Can I ask another question? Uh, is it okay? Yes, yes okay. sure. sure uh, you can. Uh, so I saw in your um, introduction slides, you had uh, Nepal. And in that, uh, I, uh, their women, female labor participation is very high in the 80s, uh, very uh, close to the male labor force participation, which is not even observed in uh, the Western countries. There is a bigger difference in that. Uh, have you looked into that as to why there is a, such a uh, high female labor force participation? I don't think the education level is also as high as in, you know, in close to Sri Lanka, uh, female uh, education levels. Yes, Madam Tamara, thank you for the question, Madam. Uh, yes, that's the interesting thing. It's kind of an outlier in this research. Not only uh, Nepal, the Bhutan is also showing such. Uh, such kind of tendency and in Afghanistan also it's uh, slightly equal to the 50% range however uh, in Nepal case I was interested in that thing and I went to Nepal in last uh, June uh, last January 2020 January for a conference and uh, I did a one uh, week survey in Nepal as well so I have discussed I had interviews a uh, personal interviews with these Nepalian females and I saw that Especially, Nepalian females are engaged in more and more in minor works like uh, cutting grasses, uh, okay, cleaning toilets. Uh, okay, even within a university premises, I went to the Tribhuvan University in Kathmandu, and I saw that there are lots of females who are working in the gardens and everything. So then I asked from uh, in the one lecture with one lecture I had an interview and I asked what is the reason for this kind of high labor force participation in this country because most of the laborers most of the females are working more in minor job opportunities they are not trying to catch more more job opportunities that means some of the jobs like grass cutting paint in houses these things are not doing by Sri Lankan females so, but Nepalian females are doing such things as well paint in houses cutting grasses uh, and everything so this is a kind of a trend that I observed. There may be more reasons that need to be explored about that outlier. Thank you for highlighting that point, Madam Tamara. Okay. Thank you. Um, I have some questions uh, to uh, uh, Puni, right? Um, uh, but uh, I will, if there's anybody else who wants to ask questions, I can wait. Uh, if uh... Any more questions for Mr. Vijayavardhana about it? very interesting study gender and wage yes there... yeah you can... hello am i audible yeah okay um so what are the reasons behind females with high level of education being less responsive to wage differential compensation than women with low level of education? Uh, you're asking what are the regions? Reasons. Reasons. Are reasons? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Of course, in Sri Lanka, when we go to a university, more number of children are covered by the female faces. In this audience also, sometimes more number of faces are covered by the females. The education level of the females is comparatively high and it is showing an increase in trend. 
but uh, when we think about uh, the female labor force participation in last 20 decades it's around 35 30 like that so there is a, a trade off between the educational investment on girls and the return of these girls for the female labor force participation so one of the main identification that i identified through this research is most of the young females like you okay you are, you will definitely join with the labor force soon after you complete your degree but once you receive your first baby or once you marry sometimes this hope will be changed i can remember i had discussion with a, one of the nurse who have practiced 10 years as a nurse right uh, in a uh, government hospital as well as later in nine mills hospital uh Navala. and i asked her you uh, resigned from the job why did you resign from the job she said that yes i resigned the job because i want to co commit my life for my young daughter okay daughter is an infant okay like one year's infant then i asked would you like to join okay if we pay extra wage would you like to join with the nursing job again she said no now my life is infant my baby so i will never go to bear job back my husband's income is totally enough the happiness is the main thing okay money is not everything like that their answers were like that that means with the change of the lifestyle the females attitudes are changing but males can't change such attitudes so definitely they have to uh, fulfill all the requirements of entire family though no? with the uh, voluntary with the fortunate situation or unfortunate situation we have to work right however females can change their mindsets after the first baby and after the marriages right so those are some reasons as well as that there are some other problems like in the within the transportation females are facing lots of problems not only that okay uh, the companies are also not like to recruit more and more females okay so i got a one message in the last time when i was acting as a lecturer okay sent five male students and one female student for their company i asked why one female because they know that, uh, okay, they will be definitely taking lots of leaves uh, once they receive babies. And so they have to pay even for maternal leaves as well. Under this kind of situation, companies are also showing less likelihood to recruit the females. So there is a problem with the labor supply side of the female as well as labor demand side of the female. So these are the problems that we need to solve. And thank you very much for the question. I'm taking more time. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you very much. For um, oh, I think Tamara just Kuni uh, Yes, yes. I uh, shall I ask my question? Uh, can you hear? Uh, yes, madam. Okay. Uh, I can hear. Is it okay to leave right now? But never mind. Is so, it okay uh, to leave right, madam? Okay. Um, let me uh, ask my question. Um, that. Uh, uh, one question is uh, basically what is the how does the price differential between hot pepper and i think the regular pepper that uh, you were referring to is what we see like the chilies right so what is the price differential in these two uh, is there any uh, additional gain that the, these farmers will get by cultivating hot pepper by shifting into hot pepper is there a bigger price that they can bargain uh, and uh, also basically uh, is it uh, is it uh, encouraged to grow as a export uh, crop or is it for the local market and um, the additional question is why did you select minuangode area because um, uh, from what i know minuangode is not a big farming area uh, maybe we we see more uh, chili cultivation towards the west, north central uh, area so not really a big uh, you don't get big farms in uh, Minuanga. Thank you madam for your question uh, when we talk about the price ranges actually hot pepper cost uh, more than normal chili uh, because uh, it has ex exceptional uh, heat uh, than the normal uh, chilies we consume 
so hot pepper uh, when when we talk about the price of uh, hot pepper uh, it includes the price range in between 600 to 800 rupees and and also uh, the company uh, the I use this uh, topic hot pepper uh, because uh, uh, the the Ceylon Agro Industries uh, Prima Group uh, located in Sidhu uh, near Minuan Gode. Uh, so they wanted to uh, check the opportunity cost uh, whether uh, when cultivating this crop uh, because they have uh, conducted uh, two researches uh, in Martale area and Minuan Gode. So the, they wanted to uh, study the opportunity cost, uh, whether which area uh, profitable for this crop. Uh, and also they are going to uh, expand their product portfolio using this uh, unique variety uh, by uh, producing hot sauce. Uh, because there is a growing demand, uh, when you consider the world market, there's a growing demand towards hot sauce. So they are going to produce hot sauce and export uh, to the market, uh, foreign market. So that's it. Thank okay, thank you. Question is uh, breaking up, so I was. I hope you all can hear me still, though. Hear me? Yes, madam, we can yeah. hear you. Okay. Right. I have a question for you as well. Uh, in terms of um, gender, I'd like you to explain how, uh, what differences you saw in, in willingness to, you know, uh, tr transfer to this uh, hot paper in terms of gender. What did you uh, kind of uh, uh, study more in depth into this? So, you know, what what uh, characteristics did you see? It's when uh, consider the gender, uh, most of the uh, female farmers uh, preferred to uh, shift uh, because uh, because we know that there is no uh, very big farming population. So most of the farming practices are carried out by the female farmers and uh, so they prefer to especially when compared to the gender uh, female farmers prefer to shift did you investigate as to why this is maybe you know the involved the physical uh, uh, labor involved or is there anything like that or did you uh, investigate further as to why uh, women yeah. prefer this uh, because uh, in uh, when consider the Minwan area, uh, the farming is not the main uh, occupation of the people. Uh, they uh, do it as a extra income source. Uh, right. So that's why I think uh, most of the female farmers uh, like the shift. Right. Interesting. Uh, do we have any more uh, um, questions or comments from uh, Ms. Gunasekara? If not, uh, I think we can, uh, do we have uh, any questions? Right, okay. So uh, if not, uh, thank you very much for both present presenters. Uh, uh, the two presentations were very uh, insightful, very enlightening. Uh, the first one on gender, you know, this is also a very, uh, um, mostly uh, discussed and a very controversial issue uh, of women participating in, uh, in the labor force and, you know, uh, wage compensation, so a very interesting topic. And uh, Ms. Sapuni Gunasekara's uh, uh, presentation on, on agribusiness was also very interesting and very timely, I think. Uh, as a nation, we are going through a very difficult time and uh, uh, this is focusing on national development. So thank you both uh, for presenting, uh, you know, very um, informative, very interesting uh, uh, insights uh, based on your papers. Uh, and I think uh, obviously research is the 
seed of uh, new knowledge production and understanding of society. We need to understand ourselves as we move forward from these uh, difficult times. It's, it's very important that we engage in, in new research uh, and share our thoughts and you know, uh, question um, and you know, uh, engage in events like this to move forward because the world has not uh, encountered issues like this before. So we need to uh, we need to explore, we need to observe, we need to analyze, we need to find new methods, you know, innovative research methods. So thank you all for, uh, thank you the, thank you for the uh, two presenters and thank you all for participating. Um, and uh, I wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am. That was such a scholarly session on almost all the sessions that we were studying so far. All these valuable insights gave us a new perspective that one should adapt while discussing these issues practically. On behalf of the organizing committee, I would like to thank Dr. Kamalika Jayatilaka for chairing this session. And I will also like to thank the presenters on behalf of the virtual gathering here for valuable knowledge that they have provided us. WMP MVJ Vardhana and DRJ Srivardhana, HSW Gunasekara, GC Samaravira, and G Jayasundara. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Now, on behalf of the organizers, I would like to request all the speakers, the chairperson, and all the participants of the session to switch their web cameras on for an official photograph. Thank you. It has been a privilege to share the knowledge in this moment with all of you. With that, we'll be ending up today's second and final technical session for social sciences and humanities. That also concludes the technical sessions of Faculty of Management, Social Sciences and Humanities at 14th International Research Conference of General Sejong Kutalawala Defense University. Thank you all for your honorable contribution. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the national anthem. Sri Lanka Mata, up Sri Lanka, Namo, 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 Mata, Sundar Siri Barini. Surendi ati sob mane langka, dani dani ek mal palatur piri jay bhumi ramya. Ab hat sab sir sit sajna, jivan e mata, piri ganu mein ab vakti puja namo namo. Up to Sri Lanka, Namo, 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 Mata. Up to Vidya, Up to me, Up to Sakya, Up to me, Up to Shakti, Up to Hadatul Bhakti. Aaloke, apke anukane, og ap jivan be, ap mukti og be, ab jivan ke bine niti me ap kukud karan mata, yaan veer vard bami ne ragi ne yaan. जय भूमि एक मावक के दारू कल बगीना यमु यमु बीनो कमा
Amor